This is a homemade digital electronic load. Sometimes it's called a constant load controller. In a previous video I've made the analog version for this device. And in that case I had very good results and I was able to get the fixed value for the current from 10 mA up to 5 A. And the MOSFET was always cool because I was using a big heat dissipator with a cooling fan. But the analog version can do anything more than that. You can fix a current value with the potentiometer and it will automatically adjust the internal circuit so the current value will always be the fixed value. This new version is digitally controlled and you could have multiple modes, such as constant load, constant current or constant power. But there is even more. This new version is also monitoring the voltage, not just the current value. That's why we can also print on the screen the power and that is very useful. But even more, the voltage read is made on these main terminals but also on these compensation terminals because at high current values there will be a voltage drop on the wires and we don't want to take that in consideration. The controller is very easy to use with the rotor encoder. So in this video we will see how I've made this electronic load and I will share with you the code for the Arduino, the schematic and the part list and the step by step tutorial. I will also show you different ways of controlling the voltage at the MOSFET gate and explain which one is better and why. For more information about the analog version, please see my previous video below in the description. So I hope that this new version will teach you something new as well. So make sure that you subscribe and activate the notification bell. A huge thank you to all my patrons. So let's get started. This episode is sponsored by the PCB manufacturer GLC PCB. You can still get 5 PCBs for only $2 and the order process is fast and easy. And to save money you could go to the link below where you will find a GLC PCB contest and you can vote for my PCB project and by that you will win a coupon that you could use on any PCB order process. Once you voted for my project you will get that coupon from GLC PCB and that will appear on your order process for ordering 2 layers, 4 or even 6 layers PCBs of very good quality. The link is in the description. What's up my friends, welcome back. Let me first show you how this new version works. Then I will explain you the circuit and the components that we need, we will see some examples of controlling the voltage at the MOSFET gate and then how to mount it. See the step by step tutorial with more photos on electronoops.com. Ok so this new version now has a case, because I wanted to make it more permanent. The case is made out of plywood with some 3D printed parts and I've also applied a carbon fiber vinyl to make it look better. On the front we have two main plugs and these are the load input connections. We have these other two connectors here and these are the compensation probes for measuring the voltage at the same time. We print the values on this LCD screen and to set the values we use this rotor encoder. Ok so first we get into constant load mode. Using the encoder we select the desired load in ohms. For example I set it to 50 ohms. Now I apply 5 volts for my power supply and there should be a current flow of 100 mA. On the LCD screen we have the set point for the load, the current value, the voltage and the power. When the mode is running you can still use the rotor encoder if you want to change the set point value. By pressing the red button we can enable or disable the load so everything goes to zero, in case that you want to first adjust the set point value and then enable the load. If you press the blue button we get back to the main menu and the load control stops as well for safety. Ok so now we go into current mode. Let's set it to 500 mA. I connect my power supply and as you can see we have 500 mA current flow. And even if I change the voltage from the supply, the current value stays the same because the load will change automatically in order to keep always 500 mA. Let's now go to the constant power mode. In this mode depending on the input voltage we increase or decrease the current value so we have always the same power. I set this to 2 watts and as you can see I start changing the input voltage and the current will change automatically in such a way that the power is always 2 watts. This new version has a resolution of 1 mA for the current, 
1 mW for the power and 1 ohm for the resistance, because I'm using a 16 bit ADC and a 12 bit DAC. Ok, now let's see how to build this. First, let's see what we need. I will print the values on this type of LCD screen that has an I2C communication, so using only two wires we can print the data. The brain of the controller will be an Arduino Nano, of course. To control the menu, I will use a rotor encoder and some extra push buttons. This type of encoder also has a push button inside that we can use. To make the voltage read, I will use once again the 16 bit ADC because it works great and it has a good resolution. To control the load, I will use a MOSFET as before, an N channel MOSFET. We need to keep this MOSFET very cool, so we need a good heat dissipator. Once again, a very good solution is to use an old cooler from a PC that already has a fan. In my case, I will use this one. We could also control the speed of this fan using a PWM signal from the Arduino, so when there is no power connected, the fan will stay turned off. We could even add a temperature sensor on top of the MOSFET, so we could activate the fan only when needed, but for now, I will have it always turned on. Ok, now for the special part of this project. We have a few methods of controlling the voltage at the gate of the MOSFET, using a DAC or a PWM signal with a low pass filter. Remember from the previous project that in order to control the channel resistance of a MOSFET, we need to change the voltage between the gate and the source. The higher is the voltage difference, more current could pass, and that represents a lower load. So that's how we control the load value. But we need some sort of feedback, so we could adjust the gate voltage according to the current value passing through the MOSFET. So the options that we will see are about this feedback and the voltage control at the gate of the MOSFET. Let's start with the voltage control. In the past electronic load project, we had an analog voltage control. We were using a potentiometer, connected to an amplifier, connected to the MOSFET gate. The amplifier was always following the voltage at the source of the MOSFET and by that it was very easy to control the current. But now I want a digital control that will also have a decent precision. So one way to control the voltage digitally is using a PWM signal with a filter. The most simple circuit is this one, the PWM signal from the Arduino connected to a resistor and a low pass capacitor. I make a test with this circuit with the Arduino. So this is the PWM signal without the capacitor. As you can see, I can control the width of this signal with the potentiometer. But now I add a capacitor and there you go. We now have a controllable DC voltage that could go from 0 to 4.5 volts more or less. If you can get to 5 volts, you need to tweak a little bit the capacitor value. But the problem with this kind of control is the resolution. The PWM signal from the Arduino is of 8 bits, so values from 0 up to 255. So if you want to control current values up to 5 amps, that would be around 19 mA for each point, without including the error. But not just that, this MOSFET will be in lineal control for voltages from 0 up to around 10 volts, so we can't even use the entire range. So if you don't need high precision or high current values, you could use this method too. But in my case, to control the voltage I've decided to use a DAC, or a digital to analog converter. This one here is the MCP4725, and this has 12 bits. So that means that we have 4096 points to control, compared with only 255 values if we were to use the PWM signal from the Arduino. This module is controlled with I2C communication, so it's very easy to control. Just install the library and start sending values. I connect this module to the Arduino to pins A4 and A5 for data and clock. I upload the simple code using the needed library. Now as you can see, using the potentiometer, I can set the values from 0 to 5 volts, since this module will have a real to real output. Ok, so now all is left to decide is how to make the current read, and for that we also have two options. In the last project I was using a 1 ohm resistor shunt, and I was measuring the voltage drop on this resistor with the 16 bit ADC, and if you know the voltage and you also know the resistance value, you can calculate the current value. Another solution is to use this type of current sensor. Depending on the model, you could have one that goes up to 5 amps, to 20 or 30 amps. But that's not the problem. The output of the sensor is an analog value, and the sensitivity is of 185 millivolts per each measured amp. So for example, if you measure 10 milliamps, the output will be 1.8 millivolts, 
so we can read this directly with the Arduino ADC, because that is of only 10 bits, and that resolution is not enough. So we need once again to use the 16 bits ADC. So in this case, it's better to use again the 1 ohm shunt resistor, and measure directly the voltage drop on this resistor in differential mode with the 16 bits ADC. Ok, some extra parts that we need are for example the on and off switch to turn on the controller, a 12V DC transformer to supply everything, 4 of these banana connectors, some jack connectors for the main input, we need wires and the prototyping PCB. So this is pretty much everything that we need. See the full part list below in the description and also the schematic. So keep that schematic in front of you and let's start mounting the circuit. The first step is to solder thick enough wires to the MOSFET pins. In my last electronic load controller, I've made the mistake of using thin wires, so at around 5 amps that would burn out quick. Also add shrinking tubes for insulation. Remember that for more power you could use multiple MOSFETs in parallel. Anyway, now we make a small hole in the heat sink. I add a little bit of thermal paste. Once I do that, I screw in place the MOSFET. For the LCD I solder 4 wires for data, clock and power. Then I've 3D printed this plastic cover and place the LCD inside with screws. For the main circuit I solder everything on the prototyping PCB. And from here I will have some wires connected to the screen, to the encoder, to the push buttons and the MOSFET. So this is the final board, that has the shunt resistor, the ADC and the DAC modules and the Arduino. I solder some wires to the rotor encoder and the push buttons. Now that we have each part ready, we did a case to fit everything inside. I've used some plywood and created a case big enough to fit the heat dissipator. I first glued together 4 sides of the case. Then I've covered this with carbon fiber vinyl to make it look better. I've made a hole for the ventilator on the back, and another one on the side. Then I've 3D printed some covers. One for the main fan on the back, and another one for the hole on the side. And I glue this in place using some super glue. With this the case will look a lot better. For the bottom part I cut another piece of plywood, and I place a few wood blocks in order to add some screws, and join together the bottom part with the top part. Then I cut the front part of plywood, and I glue the carbon fiber vinyl on top. I measure and make the holes for the banana connectors, the on and off switch, for the encoder, the push buttons and the screen 3D printed part. So now I screw everything in place on this front plywood, all the buttons, the connectors and the screen. I solder all the cables and I fit everything inside of the case. The cooling fan is glued on the back part of the case, just in front of the 3D printed part with the hole. I've cut the PCB to size and then I glue it in place on the bottom plywood and then we have a lot of wires connecting everything. Remember to use thick wires for the high current parts of the circuit. I've also placed a female jack here on the back, and this will be the 12V input, and this is connected to the main on and off switch, and from here is connected to the PCB and to the cooling fan on the back. I've also connected a small buzzer to digital pin D3 for sound notifications. The Arduino is placed in such a way that through this small hole I can feed the USB cable and be able to program the microcontroller. So everything is ready, it's time to upload the code. So please go below and download this code together with all the needed libraries for the screen, the ADC and the DAC. The code could always be improved, this is just the first version. So compile, connect the USB and upload the code and let's see the results. I connect the 12V transformer on the back. Then I flip the main switch and there you go. We can see the main menu and the cooling fan is also spinning on the back. Ok, so with the rotor encoder you can select between the constant load, the constant current value or constant power. Push the encoder and select a value. Once selected the mode is activated and on the screen we have the set point, the voltage read, the current and the power. The voltage value is jumping around till you connect something at the input, so don't worry. When the mode is active you can still increase or decrease the value with the rotor encoder but with steps of just one unit. Press the blue button and go back to the main menu. Using this simple menu is very easy, right? So let's make another test. 
First I enter the current mode and I set it to let's say 200 milliamps. I connect my power supply with a voltage of 5 volts. So as you can see 200 milliamps are now flowing to the electronic load and we can see the voltage, the current and the power on the display. I've also connected a multimeter in series so we could see good values. While running I can increase the set point with the encoder and as you can see we have good values. Now push the blue button and now we go into constant load mode. I set the load to let's say 50 ohms. I connect the 5V supply and there you go. 100 milliamps are now flowing to the electronic load of 50 ohms and we have the same value on my power supply. I can still increase or decrease the resistance value with the encoder and I can go down to just a couple of ohms. Finally press the menu button and we go into power mode. I select a constant power of 0.3 watts or 300 milliwatts. I connect the supply and there you go. In this case even if I change the input voltage from the supply the power stays the same. The controller automatically adapts the current value. Once again use the rotor encoder to increase or decrease the value if you want. So guys I can now close the bottom part of the case. We have 4 screws for that. I tie the screws and the electronic load project is ready. If you want you could add some labels on the front part to make it look better. Some labels for the information on the screen, one for the menu button and two more for the input terminals. This controller could get up to 1.6 amps more or less. But that's because the DAC output could only go up to 5 volts so we can fully turn on the MOSFET. As you can see even if I set the current to 1.8 amps it won't pass off 1.7. Don't worry, I will post a second schematic below that includes an operational amplifier to increase the DAC output up to around 10 volts so we could go to higher current values. By the way, in all the modes if you press the red button it will pause the controller so we turn off the MOSFET and no more current is flowing. We use this if you want to first set the value and then activate the load. I had some problems with the sampling speed of the ADS-1115. This is a little bit slow and you will see more about this in the comments in the code so please read the code line by line to understand more. Well guys this was my electronic load controller with modes for constant load, constant current or constant power. Check all the links below. Consider supporting my work on Patreon. I would really appreciate that. If you like this video give it a like and consider subscribing and remember to activate the notification bell. Thanks again and see you later guys.